the unique wedge that we have into the market is that we we uh, focus on immigrant founders. Uh, this includes immigrants or first generation, meaning if your parents are immigrants but you were born here, you you're still counted in our thesis. Um, we did this because immigrants just over index naturally in in company creation. So, uh, forty six percent of Fortune five hundred companies, uh, forty two percent of a billion dollar unicorn companies were founded by immigrant founders. And so we said we're we're going to build a fund that uh, doubles down in a population that over indexes in business creation, um, and that's what we do. So then we, you know, because of immigrant founders meeting them at the early stages the the biggest barriers they have to building a company is what we try to help them with right so access to capital which is an easy one most funds can help you with that they give you money uh access to network so this is a unique area right so surrounding uh each of our portfolio companies with peers as well as mentors advisors investors that believe in in kind of the the company building playbook of, of immigrants as well as their ethos in in, in life um and really understand the importance of supporting them at the early days. Um, and lastly, immigration. So we do have an in-house immigration attorney and uh, team that helps us sponsor the visas of those on H-1Bs so they can work on their companies uh, or figuring out what's the best visa, which there's, you know, I think we've done 11 different types of visas. We've done like 160 filings at this point. Um, and that's part of, of, of what comes with the investment process for us. Maria, I got a question, you know, as an instructor here on campus, you know, we see hundreds of students all the time, they're all excited. Um, but you made this point earlier about students only having this kind of, you know, one niche of problems, seasoned executives having another experience altogether. What could a student do to find better problems to build companies around? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there, there's a couple of things, right? Because when you're looking at the founder market fit, right, you're trying to figure out, does this founder have the skills, expertise, and relationships to where they have an unfair advantage to build a business in the space, right? Um, when you look at them, you're like, what's the product that this individual was born to build, right? The company that if they didn't build, no one else out there could probably build it as quickly or as fast. So that's the kind of question we're asking. And so that question is more about positioning yourself on around the, a problem that you do want to solve, which requires focus early, which I think is, is the thing that is tough for, for young entrepreneurs is uh, just as hard it is to pick a major because you're like, I don't know what the hell I want to do with my life. Uh, it's obviously going to be hard for you to like specialize in addition to your major in an even extra layer of things to say this is a this is the company that if I don't build in my life, no one else is going to build it because you don't know yet. Um, it, it work experience wise. So ways that I've seen students kind of get around this uh, is uh, students that do start working with professors that are doing some kind of industry defining change, technologically change, uh, filing patents. Like you're really working at the edge of something new, um, whether it's in supply chain, the healthcare, financial services, like. Uh, figuring out how to manage risk like there's there's all, all your professors work in, in the reason that they're PhDs is because they're working to really push the boundaries of any particular field therefore they're probably solving for some big pain point uh, I think another way I've seen fa uh, young folks kind of get around that is the jobs that they take summer gap years uh, during school they expose themselves deeply into high growth startups in the space all right and so getting that startup job that doesn't really pay that much but is a high growth startup who just raised their series a or b um and you're going to go be an engineering intern a product intern and you really stick to that startup for three or four summers right so i know folks that uh started interning at slack when they were freshmen and slack was maybe 50 uh so people at the time and by the time they, you know, they did an internship with Slack every single summer, by the time they left, Slack was 500 people and, and you know, they could probably move into being a product manager right after college. They really wanted to because they, they've been there as much as the last person that was, uh, uh, they've seen more than probably the last person that was hired in Slack at, at employee number 500. Maria, I'd love to hear more about like your investment thesis. So how, how did you get passionate about, you know, uh, immigrant founders? Like, what do you see as the opportunities there? Like, wh why, why is this 
the place you want to invest as opposed to the million other ideas you could chase down? What, what, what lights your fire? Yeah. There? I mean, I think one, I'm an immigrant myself. So I'm a, I'm a refugee. I came from Colombia when I was seven years old, um, grew up in Florida in Orlando, Florida, where there's literally nothing in tech. It's like, aside from Disney world, it's pretty suburban place. Um, I think I fell in love with, with tech and anything innovation. Cause I love things that move quickly probably as you can tell I talk quickly I also think very quickly and so I can't you know I, I when I think about uh, uh you know I did I did my short stand in undergrad in, in Goldman Sachs and I did try to see if, if law or Paul like anything in law would be of, of um fun to me and I, I couldn't do it like the day-to-day would just destroy my soul um and so that was just not my thing um I guess in terms of investment thesis, I mean, I, I'm early stage because I ultimately bet on people and, and big markets and interesting insights above anything else. I, I don't, I think once you start having numbers and revenue and trying to understand like, you know, if the margins make sense and if the margins can scale, I kind of lose uh, a lot of the fun. Uh, but, so that's kind of why I have friends that do later investment. And then I just ask them, does this make sense? And then they're like, yeah, that, that should scale. But yeah. Yeah.